The Chicago Bears, riding the crest of five straight wins, clash with the Green Bay Packers in their drive on first place in the Western Conference. 50,000 fill Wrigley Field to cheer the Bears on. Chicago's Ed Brown makes the Packers see red on the game's third play. He pitches to lanky Gene Schroeder, and Gene is chased out of bounds on the Green Bay 47. Brown, the league's leading passer, shows why. This time, Rick Caceres catches, and the play nets 13 yards. Big John Hoffman roars into the end zone to culminate a 12-play, 72-yard drive. The Bears growl early with a 7-0 lead after the first quarter. Rick Caceres, a sensational performer all season for Chicago, is no different today. He weaves 28 yards to move the Bears inside the Packer 30. Veteran George Blanda assumes the control for Chicago. He fouls the bullseye to Harlan Hill, and Hill sweeps into pay dirt on a beautiful 23-yard scoring maneuver. The Bears lead 14 to nothing. It's still early in the game, and the Bears are just beginning. George Blanda fakes everyone, our cameraman included. Blanda lost a tremendous 69-yard touchdown aerial to Bill McCall, and Chicago leads 21 to nothing. Green Bay comes alive, but it takes a real struggle. Tobin Road passes, and Billy Houghton wins out in the tug of war with Chicago's J.C. Caroline on the Chicago 29. Rope rocks the Bears once again. He fires a 23-yard strike to Gary Canapel in the end zone. Gary is stunned, but he's all right, and now Chicago's lead is paired to 21-7. Burley John Hoffman, who totaled 107 yards rushing for the day, rumbles to the outside, then shifts into high gear for a 41-yard excursion deep in the Green Bay territory. George Blanda demonstrates trickery from the team. But Green Bay pass defender Bobby Dillon isn't fooled. He hijacks Blanda's cross and sets sail on a 40-yard return to midfield. Turnabout is fair play, but the Bears squeeze the life out of the old axiom. J.C. Caroline intercepts Tobin Rose aerial and does a tightrope act on the sideline on a thrilling 52-yard touchdown run. The smooth-functioning Chicago 11 features a 28-7 margin. George Blanda kicks off for the Bears, and Green Bay's Al Carmichael makes the grab one yard deep in his own end zone. Al shakes off several Bears, then heads down the far sideline on a spine-tingling 74-yard gallop. John Helwig finally collars Carmichael to save a touchdown. The half ends a moment later with the Bears holding a 28-7 advantage. Green Bay bounces back on the tossing of Tobin Rote. Rote rifles to Billy Houghton, and Billy completes a perfect 49-yard touchdown play. The Packers trail 28-14. Not to be outdone, Chicago's Ed Brown unlimbers his pitching arm. He lost a long-distance lob to Harlan Hill, who makes the catch among three Packer defenders. Then speeds to a touchdown. A great 70-yard play. Chicago leads Green Bay 35-14 after the third quarter. There's no stopping George Bland today. He pitches to his favorite target, Harlan Hill, and the Bears are on the prowl once again. The Packers set up a bear trap, but George Blanda boots right over it. His 29-yard field goal strips the upright, and the Bears add three more points. There's little time left, but the never-say-die Packers want to make the most of it. Rookie Bart Starr shoots the works with a long pass to Bill Houghton, who makes a running catch to chalk up a 53-yard game. Starr stays in the sky, but rookie M.L. Brackett brings him down to earth with a rally-scattering interception. The Chicago Bears proved too much for Green Bay in recording a 38-14 victory, their sixth straight victory in league play. The win vaults the Bears into a tie for first place with the Detroit Lions in the National League Western Conference. 
18,000 hardy football fans braved freezing temperatures for the final home appearance of the Green Bay Packers. This game with the San Francisco 49ers marks the end of an era. After 32 years, the Packers are moving to a new stadium in Green Bay, presently under construction. Despite a five-game losing streak, Frankie Albert, the San Francisco coach, manages a smile. Albert's a former Stanford and 49er star. Remember this man? He's the 49er spectacular back, Hugh McElhenney. We'll see much more of him later on. Coach Albert is grooming rookie quarterback Earl Morrow for a starting assignment. Morrow's a former All-American from Michigan State. Number 82 is Gordon Saltaw, San Francisco's field goal and place-kicking specialist, and the good one. Bart Starr, rookie Alabama passer, faces a first-period Packer push with an 18-yard flip to Gary Canaffle. Bart Starr was never brighter. Bart lost the lead pass downfield. A fine fingertip catch by Billy Houghton and it's touchdown Green Bay. The Packers missed the extra point, and it's a 6 to nothing game. In the second period, veteran passer Tobin Rhodes pilots the Packers. Tobin's target is the same Billy Houghton, and how's that for a fast 37 yards? The 49ers present a formidable front wall, but Fred Cohn scales it with a 20-yard field goal to give the Packers a 9-0 lead. Now here comes San Francisco. The 49ers begin with Hugh McElhenney swinging around left end for a 14-yard gain. McElhenney comes back for more. The power pack prospector pounds out a first down on the Green Bay 46. Yell Burton, Abraham Tittle, better known as YA, goes way back to pass. Tittle's toss is tucked in by Billy Wilson, and it's worth 14 yards. Passes by Tittle, riddle the Green Bay backfield. Billy Wilson pulls in another one, and San Francisco's deep in Packer territory. Tittle drives over the middle, and San Francisco scores. At halftime, Green Bay leads the way, 9-7 over the 49ers. Now watch closely, for plays like this are few and far between. It's Hugh McElhenney in action, and man, can this man go. You weave through the Packers for a breathtaking 86-yard touchdown. It's the longest run of the season in the National Football League, and it gives San Francisco a 14-9 third-quarter lead. Hats off to you, McElhenney. The momentum from McElhenney's run carries into the fourth period as the 49ers strike on a tittle to Saltaw pass play. The prospectors get to the 32, and that's close enough for Saltaw. Gordy gives it all he's got, and over she goes for three points. San Francisco leads 17 to 9. Green Bay comes smashing back. Tobin Rhodes coasts the ball and gallops away on a 16 yard play. Tobin passes this time, and it's a dandy. Billy Houghton steers the toss. Can Houghton run? He can and how. Billy picks up blockers and sweeps downfield. It's football at its finest as Houghton carries 45 yards before being bounced out of bounds on the San Francisco three. Tobin Rhodes finishes with a flourish by banging across for the score. The Packers come close, but they just miss. San Francisco snaps a five-game losing streak by edging Green Bay in an action-packed 17-16 thriller. In a traditional Turkey Day battle, the underdog Green Bay Packers before 54,000 find the snow-swept field of Briggs Stadium to their liking in their meeting with the Western Conference leaders, the Detroit Lions. Midway through the first period, Detroit's Gene Gedman, behind beautiful blocking, races around left end for 21 yards. Getting good blocking again, Gedman dashes inside right end to the Packers' three. Lumbering Leon Hart rams left tackle to score for the Lions as they take a 7-0 lead. Late in the quarter, the Packers are looking for a score. Tobin Rhodes fades deep and lets fly with a long aerial intended for Bill Houghton. The pass falls incomplete. 
but interference is called, giving the Packers a first down on the 11. When the attack bogs down, Fred Cohn boots a 12-yard field goal, and the halftime score is Detroit 7, Green Bay 3. With a heavy snowstorm greeting third period action, Detroit's Leon Hart bursts through a huge hole, breaks into the open, and races 46 yards before the Packers can pull him down. When Green Bay freezes the Lion attack, Bobby Lane registers three points on a placement to give the Lions a 10-3 advantage. The Packers come back by way of the air. Road pass is complete to Johnson, but the ball pops out of his hands and into Yale Larry. Larry lopes to the Packer 22. The Packer defense digs in, but Bobby Lane goes up and over with a 15-yard field goal to make it to point 13, Green Bay 3. In the top of the fourth period, the Packers come to life. Road pass is complete to Ferguson for 15 yards, and the first down on the Detroit 20. In spite of the snow, Rope refuses to cool off. Ferguson again makes the grab for a first down on the two. Rope caps the drive by diving into the end zone, and the Packers now trail by just 13 to 10. With Detroit in possession, Bobby Lane triggers a long pass upfield. Dave Middleton and Henry Greminger go up for the ball, but Middleton plucks it out of the air and races untouched into the end zone to complete a 56-yard touchdown, and the Lions now lead 20 to 10. The Packers fight back on the arm of Tobin Rhodes. Taking beautifully, Rhodes hits Bill Houghton for 19 yards. Rhodes again goes back to pass, but after eluding two clutching Lions, he takes off down the sideline on a galvanizing gallop to the Lion 40. Road hits the right note with a pitch to Gary Canapple for a first down on the Lion 19. On second down, Rote rifles to Cohen on the 7, and the big fullback fights into the end zone to make it Green Bay 17, Detroit 20. With the second sticking away, the Packers go for Broke. From his own 36, Road passes to Jack Roche for 43 yards. Road climaxes a rousing comeback by hooking up with Houghton to shake up the Mighty Lions with a last-minute touchdown to score a sparkling 24-20 upset. The defeat pushes Detroit into second place in the Western Conference, half a game behind the Bears. The Chicago Cardinals, only a half a game behind the New York Giants in the East, entertain the Green Bay Packers from the Western Conference. The Cardinals hope to fatten up at the expense of the Packers, but the Green Bay team has been improving steadily as the season progresses. Packers force Chicago to punt in the first quarter. John Roach gets a beauty away. Al Carmichael fumbles. John Dittrick recovers, and the cards are on the Packer 33. Jim Root passes Chicago eight yards closer with a bullet to Joe Children. Jim Root pierces the Packer defense with another pinpoint pitch. Max Boyston pulls it in and piles into the Packer end zone for a touchdown as the Cards take a 7-0 lead. It's the second period now. Packers in possession. Fred Cohn filters through the line and two blockers convoy him to the Cardinal 30. Cardinals won't cough up any more of their territory, but Fred Cohn contributes a 34-yard field goal that puts the Packers in the scoring column at 7-3. Before the half ends, the Cards get the deal and take a 13-yard trick as Jim Root rifles to Don Stonecipher. Root has the range, and he zeroes in on another target as he whips the pass to John Oshetsky on the Packer 8. Cardinals call on Ali Matson, and their great running halfback rips off the final eight yards to score. At halftime, Chicago leads Green Bay 14-3. The Packers open the third quarter with a determined drive. Ollie Ferguson claws through the cards for seven yards. 
So the Lord puts the Packers aloft with a down and out pitch to Harry Ferguson on the Chicago 14. Road exploits the Cardinals' crashing defense by handing to Cone on the draw play. And Fred fights to the five. So the North keeps and shoulders his way into the end zone to score for the Packers. The Cardinals' lead is cut to four points at 14 to 10. Chicago fights to widen the margin with Jim Root passing, but Big Bill Forrester intercepts for Green Bay and battles to the cards 39. Watch Tobin Root tilt that big skin. The talented Packer back rolls out to the right and rattles off a 20-yard gain. On his third successive carry, Root rams into the end zone, and the Packers pass the Cardinals to take a 17-14 lead. In the fourth quarter, the Cards send Lamar McCann into action, and McCann gives them plenty of action as he passes to Don Stonecipher. McCann has the Cardinals on the wing. He sends a pass to Ollie Matson in the left flat, and Matson fights to the Packers 32. Lamar McCann shuffles and deals again for the Cards. This time, the ball goes to Dave Mann on the Green Bay 15. Here's that McCann to Matson play again. Matson makes it pay off for 11 yards by racing to the floor. Ollie Matson high dives for a cardinal touchdown as Chicago gets back the lead at 21-17 with just three and a half minutes to play. The Never Say Die Packers know they haven't much time and they don't waste any. Tobin Root gets them off on the right foot by sweeping to the left for 15 yards. Green Bay goes for the long gainer and gets it. Tobin Road arches a pass to Gary Knaffel, and Gary gallops to the Chicago 1. Tobin Road bangs across, and the Green Bay Packers rock the Cardinals back on their heels with a 24-21 upset. This drops Chicago one and a half games behind New York in the Eastern Conference, while the Packers stand pat in fourth place in the West. The San Francisco 49ers and the Green Bay Packers, both clawing for fourth place in the Western Conference, meet head-on in Kizar Stadium. The battle produces some of the finest football of the season. The 49ers would like to make this a day for the home folks to remember, and they open right up with Tittle passing to Clyde Connor on the Packer 33. Hugh McElhenney, the prospector's great running star, cuts back over left guard and brings the fans to their feet with a scintillating 25-yard sprint for a 49er touchdown. After three minutes, it's San Francisco leading by 7 to nothing. But the 49ers have no corner on the thrill market today. The Packers crack right back from the kickoff as Roach passes out to Fred Cohn, and Cohn streaks down the near sideline. Cohn gets by the last two men and races across to complete a 69-yard touchdown that ties it up at 7-7. This is fast and furious football. San Francisco returns to the attack with McElhenney slamming over right tackle for eight yards. Green Bay gives up ground grudgingly, but Gordy Saltzall rams a 31-yard placement home, and the 49ers are in front again at 10-7. The pesky Packers counter in the second quarter. Tobin Root triggers across to Bill Houghton, and Green Bay moves into the prospector's claim. When Road is right, the Packer passing attack is murder. Road rifles to Joe Johnson on the 49er 25. Road has a good thing going, and he keeps right on throwing. He pitches his third straight completion to Billy Houghton on the 10. Road polishes off the Packer push by pounding into the end zone to put Green Bay back in the lead. Now it's Packers 14, Prospectors 10. Y.A. Tittle whips up his 49er. Tittle's target is Clyde Connor, and Clyde makes the catch for a 21-yard advance. Tittle and Connor have Green Bay groaning. Y.A. flips the hog hide to Clyde, and the 49ers are on the Packer 12. This prospector drive is a Tittle-Connor production all the way. They hook up to chalk up a touchdown, and San Francisco takes back the lead at 17-14 as the first half ends. The scoreless third quarter is just the lull before the storm. The 49ers set off some fourth-quarter fireworks 
as Siddle and Connor get together for a 30-yard gain. Clyde Connor is rapidly becoming San Francisco's favorite rookie. Watch him go on this play as he takes Tittle's cross and toasts it for 38 yards to make it goal to go for the prospectors. Perry smashes into the line, but he hasn't got the ball. Tittle has it, and he finishes a beautiful play by passing to Billy Wilson for a touchdown. San Francisco 24, Green Bay 14. Green Bay still in this game as Tobin Rhodes passes, but Dickie Mago commits pigskin larceny against the Packers. Mago races the width of the field, finds some protection, and scampers all the way on a 31-yard touchdown return. The 49ers strike it rich to lead the Packers 31-14. Green Bay can't get close, and the 49ers take over. Hugh McElhenney has the ball, and Hurricane Yu stirs up a storm in the Packers secondary with a hair-raising rush that carries for 50 yards. There are only three yards left to go, and Joe Perry picks that up with a pulverizing plunge that puts the Packers seven points deeper in the hole at 38-14. to 14. The Packers are forced to punt. And that looks like the end of the game, but the 49ers refuse to play it safe, and Darrell Pettick intercepts and returns to the 28. Green Bay gallops goalward as rookie quarterback Bart Starr passes to Bill Roberts for a Packer first down. Green Bay has the last word, with Bart Starr passing to Bill Houghton for the touchdown that makes it 49ers 38, Packers 20. San Francisco takes over fourth place in the Western Conference standings as both teams put on a great offensive show for Bay Area fans. The Los Angeles Coliseum features a battle between two Western Conference Titans, the Green Bay Packers and the hometown Rams. Tobin Rowe gets the Packers on the right road at the start with a dazzling dash around left end, and it totals a nifty 39 yards. Switching strategy, Rote rides the air lane. Tobin hits Gary Canapel as the Packers push inside the Ram 10. Rote puts the Packers on the board with a plunge in the pay dirt, and Green Bay grabs an early 7-0 lead. The Rams respond as Norman Van Brocklin unlimbers his pitching paw. Leon Clark makes the grab to put the herd across the midfield strike. Van Brocklin and Clark hook up again, and the Rams are one yard shy of a touchdown. Los Angeles evens the score as Joe Marconi fights for the touchdown. It's Rams 7, Packers 7. Later, it's the Packers with a golden opportunity on the Ram 11. But defensive dynamo, Bill Sherman, intercepts the Tobin Road rocket on the five-yard line, and this boy is long gone. Sherman streaks 95 yards to a spine-tingling touchdown. Now the Rams lead the Packers 14-7. More than 46,000 fans receive another thrill in the second quarter. Ram Tom Wilson sprints around there. Dwayne Putnam and John Hawk throw beautiful blocks as Wilson races 46 yards to the Green Bay 13. Joe Marconi gives the Rams six more points with a three-yard scoring burst. Score, Los Angeles 21, Green Bay 7. The Rams are full of surprises today. Norm Van Brocklin fades and fires a cross-country 56-yard scoring pitch to Feedy Bob Boyd. And the score mounts to 28-7 in favor of Los Angeles. Time is running out in the first half, but the Rams are still warm. Tom Wilson cuts up field for 14 yards. Norm Van Brocklin keeps the Rams moving with a 21-yard strike to Bob Boyd. Los Angeles scores again as Joe Marconi slices through right tackle for his third touchdown of the game. At halftime, it's Los Angeles 35, Green Bay 7. 
Greg Cohn puts the Packers on the comeback trail as the second half begins with a 21-yard sideline run. One of the league's finest running quarterbacks, Rote, rattles the Rams with a 25-yard thrust through the middle. Rote, in his final appearance as a Packer, passes. Al Carmichael clutches the 13-yard Tobin toss, and it's good for a touchdown. Gore, Rams 35, Packers 14. Los Angeles charges back as Tom Wilson makes the draw play for 23 yards. Wilson is a veritable ball of fire today. This time, Tom turtles 26 yards, and it's goal to go for the Rams. With the Packers on the lookout for Tom Wilson, Norm Van Brocklin tosses a nine-yard scoring strike to Leon Clark. The Rams now lead 42 to 14. Van Brocklin and Boyd pose a real problem for Green Bay. The Rams scoring duo hooks up once again on another 56-yard payoff play. Los Angeles now has an insurmountable 49 to 14 advantage. The Packers fight back as Fred Cohn circles in for 12 yards as the third quarter ends. Bart Starr takes over at quarterback for the Packers. He hits Phil Houghton with a bullet on the Ram five. Fred Cohn charges into the promised land, but it's a case of too little and too late. Los Angeles, parked by Norm Van Brocklin's aerial wizardry, defeats Green Bay 49 nothing. 